Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today we're doing the Let's Play Division series with the 17th SS Panzergrenadier, Gotts von B. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe for more Steel Division 2 content. Let's dive right in. So here we have another one of the most powerful divisions in the game, the 17th SS. These guys are very strong, very flexible. They have a lot of options to use, and they can be very, very deadly when... They're just very, very deadly, I should say. Overall, very strong division. Often, get, often it gets banned in League, which is a good way to kind of figure out which, which divisions people really fear. So I'm doing, going Maverick. I think this division is really well designed for Maverick. It's got the fastest transport in the game, the traction. And overall, it's just a faster division. It's got armored cars and everything to get you where you need to go. It's got strong armor and the Stug 4, which while it's only a little bit higher armor than the Stug 3 is actually a lot more effective. And we'll talk about that when we get there. It's got, it's just overall really strong. Let's start in our infantry tab with the unique unit from this division, the SS Legionary. It is an eight-man squad built for close range combat with four Berettas, four G43s, a Panzerfaust, and a Molotov cocktail. These guys will shred at close range. Very strong unit. You want to take both cards, you get two. I like taking them in A and B, especially in a Maverick deck where I'm trying to win at the beginning. You got to do that. They are veteran locked to one, but you probably would have wanted that anyway. I have both Pioneer cards here. Now, your other option is Sturm Pioneers, but the fact is Pioneers are way more flexible. They can actually kind of fight at range, while the Sturm Pioneer cannot at all. And the SS Legionary filled the same role as the Sturm Pioneer in like really getting in the woods, and they do it for five points less, and they're just way better. So Sturm Pioneer, not worth it in this deck, in my opinion, at all. There are better options. You can see I already have it fully filled. I have a leader here in A, which I like to take. I took the Volkdeutsch, which are really, like, they're disheartened, but they're they're a normal infantry squad. They are a Panzer Grenadier squad that is disheartened, which is still really strong. Some would argue better, because disheartened troops, when they attack and they get, you know, pinned, they instantly fall back, which is oftentimes what you would do anyway if they got pinned. So... You're not really losing much. So Volkdeutsch, really strong. I'm taking both cards here in A to get my 12. And I'm also taking a card of Panzer Grenadier. B, I just have more Panzer Grenadiers. And then just a card of Panzer Grenadier MG34s for the end. Uh, I didn't take the unvetted card because the truth is if I'm going long enough that I need the full unvetted card, I'm probably not winning anyway. So, and you notice all these infantry are vetted because on Maverick, I really need to win early push hard and win early so I need my troops to be high quality I don't need tons of troops I just need them to win the combat and trade well let's hop up to our recon tab which is very strong it has both the FPW 233 and 231 if you haven't watched the comparison of armored cars video I made go check that out and you'll see the comparison of all these cards that these guys rank in the top of some of the best armored cars you have the auto cannon car here in B I decided to put it in B because I end up I mean I don't have that many points in A to call in like what it would be like 12 armored cars that's excessive uh you, you have to remember you only have so many points in a you're in maverick you're getting 120 points a tick you get your original 750 and then the 10 minutes and it sounds like a lot but it goes really fast when you're calling all kinds of stuff in so spw 233 really strong at the beginning i want them early because of their extra range and they're just really strong support and the alf claire being called in in the spw 222 which is my other auto cannon car for a which allows me to put my 231 in b so basically the whole i'm expect trying to get the game to end by b so the end of b phase so technically i have armored cars for the entire battle then into our armored column here we just have Stug 4s. You have Stug 4 leaders if you wanted more, but you don't get many per card, so I don't think it's worth it. And I just have two cards in A and one in B. I've vetted them once because it only takes one tank away, so it's absolutely worth it. I don't want to go all the way down to two, though. Uh, I do want to have enough of these to work with. They're really strong. The difference between these and a Stug 3 is right there. They have 10 millimeters more armor. That's it. That's the only difference. Why, why is that so much better? Because that means they're actually basically impenetrable to Shermans and T-34s instead of their Stug 3 cousin, which can very much be pierced by the 100 meters of penetration of the Allied tanks. So this is just really, really strong against Allied tanks. Of course, against Stug 3s, they're worse because they're more expensive and they can both pierce each other pretty effectively. Support tab, they do have a lot of options here. But I basically, I went for my always, my flame flowers in the traction. You can see 115 kilometers an hour and the MG42s in that same traction. Why? Because if you get these guys to the front, the MG can stop a lot of things and 
really sets your position up strong at the beginning. And a nice card of IG-33s, which are your, like, really long-range support gun. These are really strong, just like grills and everything. They, they can, like, kind of delete an infantry squad. It's nice to have a couple. They're really flexible, and especially on the right map, they can really dominate an area. Coming down to the AT tab down here, we have a nice mix of options. They have a ton of Jagdpanzer IVs, which is an absolutely fantastic unit. Problem is they are phase locked to B. So by the time I get to B, I, I don't think I'm going to have that many points between my Stug IVs and then these other card of Jagdpanzer IVs. So I take one card of Vetted. If you were going to play these guys as balance, though, this is great to kind of spam these and see, you know, and have nine Jagdpanzer IVs. These are really strong, especially against Allied's armor, even against German, even against um, Axis armor, you know, their 135 penetration, their medium tanks barely can penetrate this. So at range, these guys absolutely clap them. It's really strong. Martyr 3s, these guys overperform, in my opinion. For 35 points, you get some HE, some 2.2 HE damage. These are really strong. I actually really enjoy Martyr 3s. And they can absolutely kill any medium tank. I mean, they, they're just like a, for 35 points, they really overperform. I strongly suggest these. Uh, not the Martyr 3 M. These guys have the AP. They're 15 points more. And while they're still very solid, they, they don't do nearly as much HE damage. Um, and it's just 15 more points. They're not that much more effective for what you're looking for. Card of Panther Shrex, just to have them. Pack 38s. Talked about why I like these light AT in A phase. Because they're cheaper, I can get more out. Pack 40 and B, because I just I like to have Pack 40 when possible. If you were playing uh, a balanced deck, I, I might consider the Krupp. Pack 43, this thing is like your big 230 millimeter penetration gun, the 43 gun. Very strong, but you know, only if you're planning to be taking out heavy armor. Really solid AA tab, taking the flak 36 in A and the flak 88, the 41 millimeter in B. I don't want to have more because A, it's really expensive card wise, and B, I, I'm hoping the opponent doesn't have that much air to use because they need to defend themselves on the ground because I'm pushing so hard. Artillery wise, you have a great arty tab. The problem is I'm not planning to play really long, so I don't want to use a ton of arty, but I you don't want to pass up Nebelwerfer 42s, the 300 millimeters. These things are basically like an off-map big booms. I mean, this will kill stuff. This kills heavy tanks. This kills everything. So these are really strong. If you were playing a balance, I would definitely suggest taking a card and being a card and C because they are actually like, they are obnoxious when spammed, but they're just really, really good and should be highly considered for any deck. And then just a card of 81 mil mortars. And then the air tab is probably the weakest part of this deck. This is where you're going to notice the weakness if you're, like, playing a balanced deck and shooting for C. You only get one card of fighters. Now, they are really strong fighters. Why? Because they have 30 millimeter auto cannons instead of 20 millimeter auto cannons. So these actually do a lot more damage. You can down planes a lot faster than their 20 millimeter cousins. Uh, if we look here, we can actually see a 20 mil. It actually does half the damage, you know. So it's... It's a, it's, a, it's a significant upgrade. I do have these uh, rocket planes for A. They do serve as extra fighters. It's not that they can't shoot things down. They're just not really good at them. At it. Um, you know, and the rockets, while rockets are not super strong, do not expect these to, like, delete an infantry squad, but they absolutely will suppress, or they can potentially kill an AT gun or something, you know, if you get a good hit. Uh, but don't expect these to overperform. They're just, they're there for the suppression and for like the last second I need to stop something from dying. And then the card of JU-88 S1s, which is your cluster plane. Not as good as the JU-88, which is the Stuka, the uh, JU-87, excuse me, like cluster bomber, but still really solid. And they have medium resilience instead of the low resilience of the Stuka. They're pretty fast. So, you know, very solid. I like them over the JU-87 G1. Some people would definitely argue that really you know, really fight me on that. And I, I can go either way. I totally understand. I hate when these guys lose sight, though, of things and don't kill anything. That really ticks me off. Um, and these also can't kill, like, really heavy things. The 140 millimeter pen doesn't really kill super heavy things, while this can kill absolutely anything that has tracks. So that's how I'm building my 17th SS Maverick deck. The deck code will be below. Uh, we'll have a let's play here soon enough. If you enjoy this content, please hit that subscribe button and have an awesome day.